Hello, I'm Captain Phoenix, and welcome to my corner. This video is uh, my uh, bit for the uh, for the Get to Know You contest, which has been started by uh, Northern Revolutions, Rob from Northern Revolutions. Uh, the idea uh, idea of the Get to Know You contest is uh, that we uh, show some records that mean something special uh, for us and uh, talk about that and the music and the relation to the record, uh, not so much about the technique and the, the sound quality. And I think that's a great idea. Um, sometimes the, the vinyl community tends to be a little technical, uh, talking about first and second pressings and uh, sound quality and uh, the, the one mastering uh, engineers uh, compared to the other. So this is about uh, getting a little bit uh, more knowledge about each other here. Uh, I put a link if, uh, to uh, Northern Revolution's uh, contest uh, below. And um, the idea is to, um, to show three records and then a link to or give a shout out to a, a YouTube channel that has uh, less uh, followers uh, than you. So if you want to know a little more about uh, some of the records that means something special for me, then just hang on. As you can see, I'm not today in my usual setting. I moved to my uh, holiday house, um, uh, cottage or holiday house, I think it's called. Uh, and uh, in the background, you see this nice view uh, over the, the, the country. It's, <laughs> it's not a picture. I hope there'll be a bird or, or something to, to show you that it's, it's uh, moving well. But this is about three records that has a special importance uh, to me. And the first one is this one. This is, of course, uh, Simon Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. I think that's a record that everybody uh, knows and uh, probably everybody has. So, um, yeah. And the reason uh, for this uh, to be the first one in my uh, contest, uh, Get to Know Your Contest, is that this was the first record I bought. It was back in 1972. I was uh, 13 years old. I have saved up some money and um, I took my father took me uh, to a, a record shop uh, called um, Bristol Music Center in the city of Copenhagen. We lived in the suburbs, and there we went in and uh, bought this record. He had a, an uncle uh, which was uh, working there, so we get a, got a little discount, which I was happy for. But more than that, I was happy for my, my father to, to take me there. We could have just have gone to the nearest... Uh, nearest record shop uh, in the suburb where we lived. He could have sent me to buy it by myself, but that was a really nice uh, father and son thing to do. Uh, he also provided me uh, with a very primitive uh, rec uh, turntable so I could uh, listen to the record. And that was the, the only record I had for, for quite a while, so I got to know it uh, pretty well. What it got me into the, to it was, uh, in the beginning, the, the title track, uh, Bridge Over Tropical Water. Um, it's still a good track. It's maybe a little overdone <laughs> in some parts. Uh, now I, I prefer uh, uh, tunes like uh, The Only Living Boy in New York and uh, Goodbye Frank Lord Wright um, more than that. Frank Lord, Goodbye Frank Lord Wright was, uh, uh, my, uh, was uh, Paul Simon's hint to, to Art Garfunkel who wanted to, to study architect architecture uh, and uh, this was uh, their very uh, last uh, record together. So, and it's still, I think it's one of most sold uh, records. So, yeah, with the lyrics on the, uh, lyrics on the back, um, as you can see, I, even I was around 13, I even tried to translate the, the lyrics for the boxer to, into Danish. I was, I was just starting to learn English in the, in the primary school. So, yeah, I never finished it, but I tried. That was good. Uh, this one, uh, this record, uh, uh, was released in 1970, and a couple of years uh, later, I bought this one. This is the, the the copy I bought, and you, as you can see here, there's there's the record, and here's the the solo uh, Paul Simon self-titled Paul Simon uh, album, which uh, was released in 1971. It was his second uh, solo album. He he made the the, the Paul Simon uh, songbook uh, back in the the 60s during the the. While he was still part of uh, Simon Garfunkel, so this is uh, this is um, from 1972, 
um, and still in the original uh, sleeve. I can also see that I have put a, a sticker here um, with my name and uh, home address uh, in my parents' house, so uh, I got these stickers around that time. So that was really a, a nice, a nice experience, nice memory uh, to think back, and a nice record which I still enjoy. Well, that was uh, 72, and then fast forward uh, 10, 11 uh, years, and I'd like to show you this one. Rykuda, Bob Till Your Drop. This was released in 1979, so also a few years uh, later than uh, this one got out. At that time, I was uh, studying at the university. I was a young man in the beginning of my 20s, uh, and I moved in a, in a big uh, uh, collective, uh, I think it's called house sharing with uh, seven uh, other uh, young uh, people. Um, we didn't have so much money, and um, we we uh, <laughs> the first uh, winter we we got there, uh, we lived there. We uh, the, the, there was a big damage uh, to the the roof of the house, and there was showed out uh, it, it showed that there were some uh, problems with the mortar between the bricks on the house as well. So we were faced with a rather uh, expensive uh, house repair. When the insurance uh, guy turned up, uh, he said, oh, but this house has been uh, too badly maintained, so we cannot uh, cover uh, these damages. So there we were. We had to do a lot of the stuff ourselves and fix it somehow. Uh, that brought us uh, closer together, uh, but of course it was uh, troublesome as well. On this record here, there's a, a tune, it's the last on page one, uh, side one, it's called I Think It's Going to Work Out Fine. And every Sunday we, we gathered, had a meeting, uh, all the eight of us living in the house, and uh, talked about the, the situation, not only with the, the house, but also with, you know, there can be problems and things going on, uh, so many people, young people living together, some were couples, some start, stopped being couples, uh, um, one of the couples got a, got a son, uh, a, very, a newborn son, so there was a lot of things going on and, and uh, it was not al always easy, but it was a very, uh, very important uh, formative years uh, for me and for the others. I see many of them still today, so many years after, so that was... It was uh, an important uh, part of my life, and um, this uh, record was part of that, especially the, the tune, I think it's going to work out fine, and in the end, uh, it did. Right, Kuda. It was, it was digitally recorded. I think it must have been one of the very first digital recordings, but uh, let's not get too deep into the technical aspects here. That's what, not what it's about. And then the last one. Uh, then we fast forward another 10, 11, 12 years to uh, 1995, maybe 96, and I'd like to show you this uh, record with uh, Anthony Kitju uh, called Lagoso. This is uh, world music, it's jazzy, it's poppy, it's, there's a little bit of rock in it, it's very rhythmical, it's a, there's a really good energy and it's very highly danceable music. At this time, in the in the middle of the 90s, uh, I had become a father um, to two sons. I also uh, had divorced uh, the, the the boy's mother, so we were living uh, two different places, not too far from each other. And the the, the boys were were uh, by my at my place uh, sometime and 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 uh, with uh, their mother at some other time. That's maybe not uh, ideal. Um, that was how it uh, turned out. Um, maybe it was hardest for the for the for the boys, but uh, as a parent, it's it's not uh, always easy. But we had a good time uh, when the boys were with me, uh, and uh, that connects to this uh, record. Um, especially one of the boys really liked it, and he really liked. He was re very rhythmical, and uh, he liked uh, especially the the tune here, Batonga, uh, the first one on on uh, side one. And uh, we danced to that, and in the beginning he was only like three years, so I had to carry him uh, around and, and dance with him uh, to this music. But he jo enjoyed it a lot, and he, he later he developed, a, a, or had maybe, a, a big sense of, of music, of uh, tones, and of rhythm. He learned himself to play the piano and a lot of other instruments, clarinet and, as well, and uh, has even composed a, a few tunes uh, himself. Uh, so uh, maybe it was a part of his, uh, what can you say, musical education, uh, education when he grew up. So this is a record that means uh, something special to me, dancing there with my young, uh, two young sons. Um, 
the youngest of them uh, is now a father for two girls, uh, which he uh, takes to concerts and, and dances with and plays music for. So this is a kind of a, a full circle. Um, my father uh, taking me to the record shop to buy my first record, me growing up with some friends, which are still friends, um, and uh, trying to make it work out fine. And then the last, uh, Angelo Kiju, me uh, dancing and playing music with my, my son, uh, who's now a father himself. So that's uh, that's full circle. Yeah, three, three important uh, records for me. Um, and I'd like to reach out to uh, Marky Mark. Um, he's on his way to uh, his first uh, 100 uh, su subscribers. He has made a lot of... Uh, uh, good videos lately. It's it's an old, not so new uh, channel, but uh, lately has been more ac active. So I'll put a link to Marky Mark's uh, channel uh, below, and um, check it out and check out this contest. I know it only runs until the 14th of uh, June, uh, 2022, but uh, we can still make uh, some uh, videos, which makes us uh, know each other a little better, and that will be nice, I think, in the vinyl community. Thanks for your time. Thanks for uh, for watching. Uh, I would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. That would that would mean a lot to me. And um, we we'll see see each other next time. Thank you. <laughs>